Well, I think, I think what I'd like to hear you um, speak to is because I, if we're following like the typical American uh, story for a second and you say, help your kids, what I hear in my American ears is like enabling, enabling, they're going to live in your basement and not have a job yeah, and failure you know, to launch. <laughs> yeah. They're going to yeah. eat the food out of your fridge and not ask for it and not say thank you. And they're 25 or whatever. So <clears throat> what do you think would be different from, um, in, in this mindset where we're like planning for the fifth generation, where we're setting ourselves up to, um, help our kids. What is, what does that look like? How is it different? Well, I think, I think that first of all, we recognize that the idea that a husband and a wife can come together and have kids early and often and thrive is sort of a, a myth from the 1950s. It's not a, it's not a re realistic um, story that existed in most times in history. I mean, you, you go to the Middle East, nobody thinks that way. They right. all are living multi-generationally. They understand they need to help each other. There's a mm -hmm. constant um, multi-generational partnering going on. It's mm -hmm. only in the West and particularly in America when we had this, you know, strange cultural experience of massive economic expansion in the 50s and 60s that now everyone expects to go on forever. And it's not happening for Gen Z. It's not happening for this next generation. You know, they're going to probably struggle more financially than their parents and I right. think for sure their grandparents. Right. And it's it's a terrible thing to say to them, you know, well, we did it because, you know, we're going to kind of not acknowledge the massive economic expansion that we enjoyed, um, the low inflation compared to what you guys are going to face. And, but we did it, you know, and then we, we use birth control and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we're like, and, you know, of course, um, our family has rejected that narrative completely. Like, I think that's, that's really almost an absurd idea if you're going to take very seriously the mandate, have a large family. Um, and, and it's important to say that the command to multiply was given to us, not just our children. The command to multiply is to have grandchildren. And that therefore I'm on the hook, part of my mission, my vision from the Lord, my, and it's, it's really not just a command, but it's really, you know, articulated as a blessing. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Right. So right. it's like, whatever I can do to help my kids multiply, we will do. And in terms of enabling, you know, one of the great things about the fact that family size, even a family of five or more, it's still incredibly small and it allows you to really get to know the hearts of your kids and to know if you're enabling them, to know whether or not you're, they're taking a lot of this stuff for granted mm -hmm. and to say in some kind of flat way, well, I'm never going to help my kids with a car payment or a down payment or childcare, because of course we know that makes spoiled brats. Really? You don't have to like, you don't have to assume that you can actually watch your child and say, Hmm, are they, are they becoming an entitled spoiled brat? Um, and, and I think that one of the things that I've learned studying multi-generational families that have poured enormous resources into the future, there are some that have been very spoiled and I think have really damaged their children, but they all have certain things in common. And one of them that it, I've noticed is they have given their children a ton of resources without any vision or mm -hmm. with the implicit vision that it, this exists for your comfort. Like we suffered and we made millions. Now we want you to like, just enjoy. Well, yeah, that's going to hurt kill kids. Yeah, we, we don't, we have a very high bar for our kids. I mean, mm -hmm. having children early and often is not for the faint of heart. No entitled right. spoiled brat is going to want to father or mother, a large family. I mean, that's, very difficult. And so I'm not, I'm not that worried, honestly, about entitlement. Um, um, I, if my kids start to sound entitled, then I'll, we'll have a heart to heart and I'll be like, what's going on here. And there's resources in the gospel to help you overcome those kinds of character flaws. And I think that, you know, I want to see you guys really sacrifice for the family the way we are, and we're all going to do this together. And it's going to be, it's going to be amazing what we can build, but it's not going to be easy. So I think yeah. that's the way I would process that. I think that's a really important question to answer.